In the beginning was the moon, Diana. Sad, silent, alone she wandered. The waves, her sighs and tears of solitude. She searched everywhere for a companion, but found only reflections of herself. Lonely, Diana desired a lover. That desire became the dawn, and from the dawn came the sun, Lucifer, the god of light. This is the witch's legend of creation. Diana and Lucifer also created man. They gave him the world and taught him to hunt, kill and be content that he might better worship them. To these powerful gods, man erected huge monuments and temples of stone. Thousands of them aligned along the paths of their gods across the sky. Many of these groups of stones, like Stonehenge, were complex observatories predicting what once were thought the unpredictable, fickle wandering of their gods. Man, now able to predict, soon sought to control the gods. trusted this control to priests.
To choose these priests, the witches, a name which comes from the Anglo-Saxon word wicca, meaning wise, hold a severe initiation ceremony. Those already initiated perform a ritual called drawing down of the moon. Since the moon is a woman, Diana, the chief of the witches is a priestess. This ceremony calls down and concentrates Diana's power in this priestess and through her, the circle and those dancing in it. Away from the circle, the initiate, blindfolded, is prepared for the ordeals which he must undergo before becoming a witch. Michael. His name is called, and he must follow, regardless of where he is asked to go or what he is asked to do. This voice both serves as a guide, and although he does not know it, Michael. to protect him from death. On his way to the circle, the initiate is to be made aware, through his own experience, of the four elements which make up the universe. Water, Michael. air, earth, and fire. The first is water. As well as the elements, the initiate is made acutely aware of himself. Naked, blind, Michael. alone, he is confronted with some of man's basic fears of nakedness, drowning, falling, pain. If he cannot master them and himself, he will be considered incapable of wisdom and will not be initiated. Fear of falling, air, fear of being lost, entombed, Michael. earth. Fire, fear of pain. The pain born he is challenged.
kids. And brought into the circle. Before being given any secrets, the initiate is as bound as he must keep those secrets. He is presented to the gods of the east, south, west and north that they may approve him. Symbolic whipping lets him understand that from now he is subject to the discipline of the cult. In spite of this, he is told, in other religions you would kneel, while I would tower above you. But in ours, we are taught to be humble. It is we who kneel to welcome you. As the knife is to man, so is the cup to woman. Let them be united in truth. The sacred objects which he will be taught to use are presented. The sword with which all magic circles are formed. The white-handled knife with which all magic objects are carved. The sensor of incense. The cords to bind and by knotting to work magic. Once again, he is shown to the gods, now unbound as a full initiate. passing of Diana, the ceremony comes to an end, all traces obscured, the cords that bound him burnt. The initiates are taught the knowledge reserved for their control of power by the priests. The magical properties of natural objects. The healing properties of herbs. As well as healing, some of those herbs were found to induce trances and hallucinations. Given to a trained witch priestess, these trances and hallucinations can be controlled.
methods used to trigger off the witch's powers of divination varied. Animals and birds were also used. The cock in this circle is watched and meaning is given to the position and order in which it pecks the grain. Sacrifice to appease the gods and examination of the entrails to forecast the future. Into this blend of magical science and religion came another, Christianity. Where it could not destroy the previous beliefs, Christianity adopted, physically and spiritually, the temples and rites of the older religions. Churches built on pagan mounds, pagan stones in their walls. The interiors and exteriors of these churches were covered with the extravagant, beautiful whorls and knots of pre-Christian imagination. Sex, fertility, and their attendant rites, so important to the continuity of life, could not be banished by the new religion, however desirable the promised rewards of death. This small font has been made from a pagan sacred stone. Pagan symbols, gods and images, covered the new churches, many of them carved on stones which had once been worshipped outside. One of the most extraordinary of these converted stones is this huge menier, which has been carved apparently with Christian symbols, but only apparently. Persecution made the disguise necessary. Note the prominent positions of the sun and moon on either side of the mother goddess, for whom the Virgin Mary now substitutes. The crossed swords on the left. The ladder of progress up to the sun, Lucifer. The whip beside it. All symbols of witchcraft, not Christianity. The Christian Church also has its initiation ceremony, which, in many of its aspects, resembles those of older religions. The initiates into the Christian faith are baptized, confirmed, and given communion in a single service. Baptism, symbolic death by drowning, followed by rebirth. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
the priest gives a candle. I give you this sign to show that you have passed from darkness to light, that henceforth you may shine as light in the world to the glory of God. He has received you by baptism into his church. We therefore welcome you into the Lord's family as fellow members of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the blood 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 of Christ. Cannibalism in primitive societies is not always motivated by hunger but through a desire to absorb the qualities of those being eaten. Christianity continued quietly, slowly assimilating and being assimilated by the people, old and new religions mingling and tolerating. Until 1066, when William, born of a witch, symbol of Lucifer on his banner, conquered and unified England under a single ruler. Bayeux Tapestry, which tells the story of this invasion, shows how pervasive were the old ideas. An apparent cross on the shield, with its swirling arms, is a symbol of the sun, Lucifer. Harold is made to swear on two altars, one pagan, one Christian, neither sufficient by itself. Consultation with a witch priestess. Astrological significance of a comet. Many fertility figures. Under William, the subtly dispersed but immensely influential ecclesiastical power was faced with a mighty, undisguised pagan temporal power. The dynasty of the Plantagenets was powerful enough to be beyond the grasp of the church. But among the people, the church had more power. Some of the old beliefs, such as Robin Hood's witch coven, twelve merry men and a priestess, Maid Marian, the Virgin Mary, Mother Goddess, escaped into legend. But that other maid, the Maid of Orleans, Joan of Arc, not disguising her beliefs as a witch, was destroyed. That the pagan rulers nevertheless feared the power of the church is shown by the story of how the order of the Knights of the Garter was formed. The Countess of Salisbury, dancing with Edward III, dropped her garter, which Edward swiftly picked up, put around his own leg and said, Oni soit qui mal y pense, evil be to he who evil thinks. But the garter is the insignia of a witch. Edward not only saved the Countess from the church, he also created the order of 13 knights, with himself as their leader, and for the Prince of Wales, another 13. On his cloak, 
are 168 small garters, which, with the one on his own leg, makes 13 times 13 covens. Apart from the decorations on churches and magical ceremonies inside houses, pagan rites, witchcraft, took place quite openly. These were known as the witches' sabbath. Witches were said to fly to the sabbath and used for this a flying ointment, here being rubbed over a young woman. Generally, deserted places were used, but to these places would come many hundreds of people. Records say that for the four big seasonal Sabbaths of the year, thousands would attend. It must be remembered that witches were the priests and priestesses of a religion believed in and practiced by the whole population before the arrival of Christianity. Like the two altars in the Bayer tapestry, some priests belonged to both religions. And there are accounts of Christian priests reprimanded for being at a witch's Sabbath. The witches, who were later tortured for it, all confessed to the joy and pleasure they got at these meetings. There would be dancing in circles, musicians, a feast. They would meet their friends and whole families would come. The image of a witch as being a toothless old woman was just as likely to be a laughing child or a beautiful young girl. At some of the Sabbaths, especially in spring, with its natural connection with fertility, fertility rites took place. And although, as admitted, everyone enjoyed these rites, their ritual intent does not warrant the degrading description of sexual orgy. persecution of the witches grew more intense, informers and chance witnesses were killed. Presiding over all these Sabbaths was their chief priest or devil, depending on the point of religion. He often wore a goat's mask, a symbol of virility for the fertility rites. As a finale to the Sabbath, Christianity made much of the infamous kiss, in which, as a sign of submission, the new initiate was asked to kiss the priests behind. Perhaps the intensity of the attacks by the Christians forced ever more stringent and binding oaths of faith on the pagans. But if the pagans had some doubtful rites and qualities, the repressive laws and ferocious tortures practiced on them by the Christians were even more barbaric. Listen to what the official records meticulously kept. Say was done to a pregnant girl suspected of being a witch. The hangman binds the girl and places her on the rack. When she did not confess, the torture was repeated. He cut off her hair, poured brandy over her head and set light to it. He placed sulphur in her armpits and burned it. Her hands were tied behind her. She was hauled up to the ceiling and suddenly dropped down. This was repeated for two hours until the hangman and his helpers 
went to lunch. When they returned, her feet and hands were tied behind her back. Brandy was poured over her again and lit. After this, she was again placed on the rack. A spiked board was placed on her back and she was again hauled up to the ceiling. The hangman then whipped her with a horsewhip. All this was done on the first day in the name of Christ. This torture, ending in death for many hundreds of thousands of initiated witches, priests and priestesses of the old religion, or simply those who believed in something other than the dogmas of Christianity, aroused an upsurge of hate and desire for revenge. Witch magic was directed against the persecutors, or sometimes to put their victims out of misery, or before the victims could confess. Metal is cast, purified, and an image is made of the person who is to be killed. or a nail is pierced through the head of the image along the marrow or spine to the heel of the left foot then from the head to the right foot Thank uh -huh. 
Seven planetary metals are made red hot and put into the water. Herbs, sacred woods and sperm are added. This liquid of life is poured into the image, which is then sealed. Priestess lies in the form of a pentacle, her head to the south and her feet to the north. These are the directions from which come the necessary powers. Ritual conception and birth of the image is performed. The cord, coming from the mouth of the priestess, tied around the image and the priest, represents the umbilical cord, or the astral link between heaven and earth. The image is drowned, as will be the person whom it represents. Despite persecution, and although often not recognized as such, witchcraft beliefs are still about today. In children's games. In superstitions. The horned god symbolized by the horseshoe, touching sacred wood. A new moon turning money. Effects of the sun, moon and planets on our lives. In Cornwall, one of the last strongholds of witchcraft, is a museum whose collection shows the persistent hold it has on people. Letters such as this, and images like this one, are received by Cecil Williamson from people who have been bewitched. They ask for help, which, when he can, he gives.
He started his collection with these remains of a famous witch in the Isle of Man. They had been burnt with her and buried with her for 300 years. Her cauldron. The pestle in which she ground the magic powders. The griddle on which with these tongs she placed the spells and charms to bake. Boiling water from this kettle scalded the potion she made for her many clients. These are the remains of the last witch to be executed in England. The large nails used to keep her down in the grave lie beside her. In another part of the museum are the modern witches and their instruments. This witch, with her familiar, a jackdaw, lives and practices in the new forest. Many of the objects used for altars, casting spells and working magic, come from all over the world, India being a favorite source. Ram's horns are always a recurrent theme, here converted into miniature altars. Musical instruments, particularly bells, are often used. The magic transmitted on the waves of sound. The ram again, surrounded with all the paraphernalia of a magic circle. The witch's cradle. On this, intoxicating fumes billowing up from the burner underneath, a witch is laid naked alone. She waits for Lucifer, an offering to him from her coven. To seal their allegiance to the cult at the end of a ceremony, in this case, a black mass, the priest was obliged to have intercourse with the female initiates. Unable to cope with the numbers, in the dim lighting, an artificial phallus was used. Many witches at their trials confessed that the devil was cold and painful. One of the most fascinating sections of the museum, a monument to the intensity of hate and the recourse to witchcraft for its implementation, is this one, Modern Images. Images of the hated victim, pins slowly and viciously stuck into the limbs and parts where pain is to be inflicted. Baptism from the bottles of holy water on either side creates greater bondage to the victim. The figures can be made from white wax, obtainable at any chemist's, or better, 
the traditional beeswax and pitch. Hair or nail clippings from the victim, like the holy water, help the connection to the image. Sometimes, organs from animals are made to substitute for the victim. These are pierced and mutilated. The corresponding organs of the victim suffer. These images are of every shape and size, realistic and symbolic. A shoe with a knot of wool to trip up the owner. A victim's glove, stuffed and pinned. The bird's sacrifice in this shoe is intended to bring death. This doll was knitted, and with every stitch, the victim's name was called aloud, her photograph stuck on and pierced. Someone who suffered in hospital wants revenge on their nurse. A husband's mistress. The women's branch of the armed forces is a rich source of these images. Photography has provided a modern way of capturing the spirit of the victim, yet still the old methods of pinning and burning are used. But magic and witchcraft today are far from being confined to museums. This is a black mass in which the place, form and vestments of a Christian mass are used. From the abodes of night, pour forth thy store of praise. I lowly bend before thee, I adore thee to the end. With loving sacrifice, thy shrine adorn. My lips are to thy feet. My prayer upon the rising incense smoke but born. Then descend to aid me, for without thee I'm lonely and forlorn. It must be noted that in this ceremony there is no crude desecration of symbols. Instead, they are transformed. Lucifer is not the devil, but the bringer of light. 
Bring light into our darkness, O Lord, is a Christian request. expected difference from the Christian mass takes place. The female element being so important to witchcraft, a priestess is brought to the altar. Scarlet woman brings the wine. To Lucifer, the sun, the priestess of Diana, the moon, is presented. The rose, her blood the lily, her flesh. Worshipping Diana, the priest adds his own life force to the blood. Piercing the wafer, now the body of Diana with his knife, she is again presented to Lucifer. The blood and flesh are brought away from the Christian altar to the witch's circle.
Psychic power, conjured up by the mass, is heightened by the addition of sexual energy. In some religions, thought to be the most powerful, the most holy. But does this power, this magic, the practical claims of witchcraft, have any reality other than in the mind? Rhythm plays a large part in magic. The rhythm of sound, drums, feet on the ground, voices. The rhythm of light, flickering of flames, reflections in water, the sun through trees. These rhythms are isolated in the laboratory and their effects on people studied. This whirling spiral, with or without sound, produces on people a kind of trance state often observed in magic. going round and round. The stroboscope has a similar effect to the flickering of flames, the fascination of fire. Witches have a ritual called scrying, in which a member of the coven looks into a mirror and sees the future.
Hear you all, saints of the true church of old time, now essentially present, that of you we claim heirship, with you we claim communion, from you we claim benediction in the name of Lucifer. Modern witches combine old and new techniques to get the scryer into the right frame of mind. Recorded music, projectors, stroboscopes, incense, robes, mystical passes, incantations. may be broken by a child. And these same cords, duly twisted, may bind a giant. incense rises, so let your praise of Lucifer. Hail Lucifer. shall the winds gather themselves together and bear you up, as it were, a little heap of dust in a sheet that has four corners, and they shall give it to the guardian of the abyss. Totally naked, then totally enclosed. Now again, totally naked. The scryer is brought to the stroboscope in the altar. His senses are constantly switched from one extreme to the other, so that he may come to the mirror with all normal preconceptions swept from his mind.
pass over this in silence. For here is the initiate enmeshed in the power which fructifies the earth. The God imposes his law upon man. Pass through darkness, Diana's midnight, to the light, Lucifer, the sun. If you take but one step in this path, you must arrive inevitably at the end. This path is beyond life and death. 